Hi friends, I have been uh, taking you through editing uh, and now I thought for a change maybe you know uh, I, I would uh, create a director's forum where I would ask some questions to the director which has been uh, bothering me or it's been bothering lots of uh, uh, young directors or would-be directors who want to know how to uh, look forward to a career in direction. So I have sort of uh, uh, asked uh, some questions to few directors who all of them have uh, created a, a niche uh, market for themselves and they are making films uh, somewhere to their choice and they are making very, it's very successfully too. So I thought I, I would uh, find out from them that uh, what is the secret of their working style or you know what is that uh, they want to convey to the new filmmakers who are going to come now in the future. Uh, so I have chosen directors who have been very kind enough to agree to answer these questions and I've chosen them from all over India uh, to uh, give a perspective of what they're doing. So the directors are uh, Homi Ajanya, uh, who has uh, directed films like Being Cyrus, Cocktail, then Finding Fanny, and recently Angrezi Media. I have been fortunate to be part of uh, most of those films too and he has a very distinctive uh, way of looking at things which is very today urban whacked out so I, I thought uh, he would be a good uh, choice for speaking his mind and uh, then Tyagarajan Kumar Raja who has uh, uh, with his films created a sort of a cult following for himself with the sort of films he has made, uh, Aranya Kandam and Super Deluxe. And uh, interestingly, he writes his, uh, like all, many of these directors do write their own films. So uh, it, it will give you, uh, I wanted them to give a perspective of what is lacking in writing also in the industry. Then I asked Anjali Menon. Uh, she is uh, made a huge name for herself with the film she has done. Uh, which are uh, from Manjari Kuru to Bangalore days to Ku day and uh, she, she has done wonderfully well for herself. And then uh, Bijoy Nambia, he is uh, made a very, started off with a very different film and since then if you see all his, structurally his films are or narratively are very different and he tries to uh, up the game in terms of narrative and uh, he, very exciting films like Shaitan, David, Vazir. And then uh, 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 there is Mahi Raga from Hyderabad. He's made a series of films and interestingly he's uh, made, uh, he's also produced films initially and then he graduated to direction which is a different sort of a uh, director you have he's made two films as producer then he's directed three four films last film was called yatra in telugu it was a biopic with mamuti as the lead role what actually i wanted was to find out from these uh, young directors that what is that they're looking at from the industry or as uh, as an art form as a commercial proposition as where it is heading and how they are going to cope up with the present scenario. So the first question is, in spite of knowing cinema is predominantly a popular art form and functions within a business framework, do you still think that this art form could thrive without being diluted to a mere business commodity? Can one strike a balance? I think uh, art will thrive, uh, but it has to 
find that right uh, balance because uh, if a film is going to be extremely arty then it will not be appreciated by a huge number of people and if it is going to be extremely commercial again the big uh, bunch of people will not appreciate it because I don't think people come there to see only that. They come in to see an art form that is exciting, that involves them, that keeps them uh, engaged. Uh, so I think we'll have to, and I think we are, we have been doing that. We have been trying to uh, get that balance. Sometimes we are bang on, but mostly we are in that space. I think it's uh, extremely uh, interconnected. The business of films uh, is a very legit business because the fact is it's one of our most expensive art forms that exists. It's extremely difficult to make a film with no finances, obviously. And it's extremely difficult to self-finance a film as well. Um, also, does it compromise the art form? Yes, at some level, I guess it uh, does. But I don't think that's altogether that bad. Because uh, very often, filmmakers uh, tend to get little carried away with their own sort of indulgence, their own art and they need someone to sort of pull them back to earth and say that listen man this is not gonna fly, this is gonna fly. So a person who's putting the finances in obviously would want to popularize the uh, film as much as they can so they would want to reach out to a wider base because that would uh, translate to wider collections which would trans make economic sense of the whole venture um, so in doing that what they think is a popular notion is um, often uh, put on a filmmaker saying that you need to incorporate this you need to cut this out this will alienate the audience this will pull in more audiences and at that point I guess you call that a compromise because um, the purity of the thought is definitely being influenced. But that is, I don't think it's all that bad. As as much as we we um, attribute cinema as an art form, uh, we cannot ignore the commerce part of it. And uh, I think uh, over the years, um, right since when cinema started, uh, there have been many many examples of uh, phenomenal filmmakers and artists who have managed to strike a very good balance between the two and who continue to do so going forward and uh, um, I can talk about various examples right from uh, Raj Kapoor uh, to down south uh, Mr. Padmarajan uh, uh, even, even Satyajit Ray I mean, uh, a lot of his films uh, were huge commercial successes as well and, um, and and you cannot disc uh, disconnect the fact that uh, artistically they were uh, way progressive. So uh, th there have been auteurs, there have been filmmakers who have managed to strike that balance between both. And uh, even in current times, there are a lot of filmmakers, uh, including me, I would like to count myself as part of that, who, who like to uh, push for that balance. Well, I don't know what is the right answer to that, but I can only tell you my answer. I don't think uh, you know we can either make it uh, you know be like a business commodity, nor can we make it like a wholehearted, just an artistic you know uh, endeavor. Because I think it, cinema stands right at the crossroads of the two, and so there needs to always be a, a sort of a left brain, right brain awareness about the medium. In in this medium, we cannot just by creating you know a, a product ensure a product which is you know up to any formula ensure that people come, will come and watch it there's still so much that is uh, you know that is organic about that whole experience they may you know, that particular day not want to watch it. so I mean, you really can't tell there's a big factor of fortune but apart from that as as you know a, a work of of uh, a collaborative art i would think it's important to recognize what experience the audience is, is is looking for when we try to tell a story at the end of the day it needs to be able to engage an audience to be able to connect with the audience so that 
they can experience the emotion with which it is made and i personally think you know films should run on a fuel of emotion and and uh, that is what really translates into the whole experience and when we do not invest it with that then it just shows up and uh, i don't know if if people really like to watch films that are not that engaging and just stick to some kind of formula but the other side also when when something is so artistic that it is not accessible to an audience that is also very challenging so i think a, a, a two sided awareness is very important and very integral uh, to the experience of the film you know we i as a director am a surrogate audience and i need to be able to watch that film and kind of gather what my audience would experience while watching the film it is predominantly it is a business with i mean i mean there's so much involved i mean i mean i have produced films before becoming a director and yes it is an art it is story and all it is a, it is an art and everything but at, at the end there's a lot of money involved a lot of effort is involved and we are answerable to our or to the stakeholders Uh, but again, it can't be purely. It is not as we are traders into some other commodity business. It does have. It it it, it is an art. There can be a balance. I mean, if you look at, I mean, maybe someone like Manjeet Singhal. That's he's he has struck a perfect balance. Not that I mean, every one of us should emulate him. But we should all try to tell stories um, for the joy of telling it. And uh, but again, keeping in mind that there's a lot of lot of uh, stake stakeholders and stake at the. and try to create a balance if you're lucky you can get a collaborator who believes in your vision who trusts your vision i had a similar slightly different but similar experience on this with my collaborator and producer and very good friend mr dinesh vijan who allowed me to make a film which i had done called finding fanny it uh, was extremely niche it was uh shot in uh, english and it was uh a story i wanted to tell because uh, i think it was just a uh, whole you know as a kid i used to read a lot of south american authors and uh, these little worlds used to sort of pop up and those worlds were stuck inside my head and i wanted to get rid of them I wanted to just puke it all onto celluloid, and for me, finding Fanny was that. And uh, I had a producer who was willing to indulge me and let me do that uh, without any real interest. He didn't really care much for the project. He was just happy to have it made and thought uh, it would be a fun thing to do. Uh, no money was made on that project. He covered his cost, but he was still happy to. uh allow that to be made as a as an art uh from an art point of view rather than a business point of view do you ever feel when you start to make a film how adversely or how positively you could affect the audience or you make it because you just want to tell that story do i make films for the audience keeping the audience in mind or because uh it's a story i really want to get out there and tell um no no i think i'm the wrong person to ask this question to uh no man i made movies only for the wrong reasons when i start the film i only try to tell the story i don't try to uh think of how it will be received but when i write i i do think of uh, the audiences i keep the audiences in mind and then i write it and it's primarily because it is an art form that that is made for people to consume so uh, i i always write like that but when i'm making i'm i'm busy trying to tell that story uh, to its maximum potential Right from when you were scripting the film, um, you're already kind of trying to anticipate how the audience is gonna uh, receive the film, uh, which part they might connect with, which part they might get offended with. So you're already kind of uh, figuring that out and trying to make sure you're trying to smoothen that as much as possible to make sure.
that it is the the idea that you're trying to communicate communicate is the best version of the idea. Uh, you can't really anticipate whether they're going to react positively or negatively to it. You know, unless it's a very controversial subject and you you are and and you have a specific uh, take on that subject, then of course uh, you know you are uh, you are prepping yourself for a, a certain audience liking a certain audience you know dismissing it. Um, so uh, I think the onus and the responsibility is on the filmmaker uh, to make sure that the idea being communicated is the is the best version of it and 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 the truest version of it. Well, again. Um... it's not that i am really interested in you know manipulating this audience or or having some kind of power over them i mean that's really not my calling i'm much more keen to transport them into a certain world where uh, they can feel a certain thing and they can experience something you know almost first hand it may be an emotion that they may not otherwise be accessing or maybe something that they've forgotten or maybe something which which will awaken something in them i think i don't really start with a goal in mind that you know this is where i have to get to through the medium of a story i would like to explore what are the various ways in which you know our audience can connect with this what are the various ways that i want to look at this particular story and it's not like one goal in mind it's it's sort of a, a process of exploration to find where will this this story lead me and uh, i think that in itself changes the process it's not the the shortest distance between two points i tell stories first i tell stories to myself and i tell stories which give me joy i mean uh, it's the last thing which would be on my mind to really think about if the story is going to be Uh, making a positive impact to people or society it's not something which i mean i don't believe that as a storyteller i have any responsibility as such but it's again a personal opinion and for me it's the story wherever the story leads wherever it is it is a story i mean i mean at the end of the day uh, it is any anyway related i mean people have a choice i mean people have i mean i believe that uh, people can make their choices and they, they don't really need to be their moral uh, guardians or ethical Uh, I made my first film, Being Cyrus, uh, purely because I was extremely uh, curious to know what filmmaking was all about, and I was a scuba diving instructor, living on the luxury in the luxury islands. I got up, decided to make the film, uh, managed to make the film, and. Uh, That was it. I was I was done, and I went back, and so I I did the first film to figure out how uh, how the film get made, and uh, I managed to obviously uh, bullshit enough people that I knew how to make a film. The second film I made was a film called Cocktail, where again I didn't make the film because I cared at all about the story. I made the film because I was uh, I loved uh, the Picard's character, Veronica. I wanted to explore that character. It, it was an interesting character to play with, uh, and more importantly, I had no idea how to do um, this whole song and dance narrative. I didn't know. I didn't get it. I, 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 it, it was, it was very uh, alien to me, and I wanted to understand it. I wanted to figure out how this, uh, how to do it. um in terms of finding fanny like i said it was uh, i just always wanted to make this sort of a conglomeration of all the authors i read and make this sort of marquesian world and uh, like a little fairy tale book uh, of a film on love and longing uh So that was the reason I did that. I mean, uh, it was not; it was a bit indulgent, I feel, at that level. Um, and the last one I did was Angrezi Medium with my dear friend and extraordinary human being uh, Irfan. Uh, and again, I did it for the wrong reasons. It wasn't for the story. Uh, it was uh, purely because I wanted to work with Irfan, and he wanted to work with me, and we'd been for the longest time wanting to collaborate. Um, and when this came at the point in our lives when it came to us we pretty much realized that 
we need to jump onto this train it was to just go on that journey of joy being with uh, irfan and uh, being with him during doing what he loved to do most and uh, for me big part of that was why i made that film so yeah that's how i uh, choose my films just purely on gut on instinct and the driving force is that will it be a good life experience for me uh, making it and that's the reason i make it not sadly not as uh, without bastardizing uh, what the true artists may claim to make movies for i don't i make it to have a great time do you feel that the theater experience is what you would prefer for your film or are you open to online ott platforms as well to tell your stories will it change your style of film making and the content you set out to create i think i make films for the big screen um i love watching films on a big screen uh, not just because of the big screen but also because of the sound and the audiences we don't react to things in the same way when we are sitting alone and watching it on the home theater or on a television or on the phone or on the laptop uh, as human beings we don't react the same way as we react as a crowd so uh, and i think i write and i shoot and i edit the films for the big screen the the way you shoot for the big screen is not the same uh, as shooting for a small screen so or the edit uh, so uh, so i would like to do it for the big screen unless i have a content that can only be done for an ott uh, i would still stick to a big screen generation of filmmakers that i come from um, makes me sound like an old horse but the we have always been prepped and designed to make films for the big screen so uh our, our preset is that you always want to make films for the big screen uh but the last couple of years there has been a dynamic change in the way audience has been consuming content especially in the uh ott platforms uh and a lot of films and now even more so because of the lockdown and because of restrictions and uh, certain films are not getting uh, all the theaters being shut a lot of filmmakers are opting to uh, uh go the ott route uh uh including me uh, but uh having said that of course uh, uh primarily uh, because i have grown up in that uh, era of watching films on the big screen and wanting to make films and making films for the big screen so uh, my preset is also that uh but i have i have also started adapting to the ott uh, uh, platforms uh, way of functioning and i i have started experimenting with it uh, with certain short formats and i definitely see myself uh, gravitating more towards it and making content for them for sure but whether it it changes my style of filmmaking i don't think so i i, I uh, right from the beginning even for short films i used to approach a short film like a feature film so uh, i i don't think the the making is going to change in any way theater will always be theater there is a euphoria there is it's almost a community watching it's something it's just with something i mean yeah theater is irreplaceable it has its own hype but again i won't really say that i mean any ott is anything lesser i mean uh, or just because i am watching it on a single screen alone doesn't take away the sheer uh, excitement or the joy of what i got to watch on or on that format for example game of thrones or uh, uh, narcos or uh, dark see i mean there are stories which you can't tell in a theatrical two hour format as such ott has given us that window where we can absolutely explore varied stories and it's equally for me i have nothing i mean i'm not going to say i mean i mean ott has been as much as a uh, joy as much as watching it in a theater um there's a great joy as a filmmaker to have your film on uh, showing in a theater um everything becomes larger than life everything's it's very satisfying to see that you know you see every little small detail that you've put into the film at least you see it and how many people see it but but it's great it's a great joy that that there's fun in that but what's more joyous joyous and uh, gives you a real sense of contentment is the fact is that only 
hundreds of strangers can sit together in a theater and have the common experience of watching your story that can't happen on an ott platform and i'll tell you something when that theater erupts in laughter it's just such a good feeling as the person who's made that and who's giving out that laughter to the audience uh it's an unparalleled feeling it's it's really joyous to be in a theater that's laughing from their bellies at some nonsense you put on the screen but that you can't get on an ott platform saying that an ott platform has a great advantage for people who want to create because uh one it gives a lot of deserving actors uh work uh which is a great thing because it is a competitive business it's very difficult for a lot of people to crack into the whole feature film space uh but otts don't need stars otts have shown us that the audience who consume uh in their house what their genre choice is and what they want they are looking for the content well to be frank uh, even more than uh, you know making films i i like to watch films so much more than i i of course do that much more than when making them and i miss that experience of of sitting in a theater and being able to watch a film which is so much bigger than you everything just feels so much more real and you know i i miss that very much and even when we are making a film one has to constantly think that okay this is going to be seen on a huge screen where the whatever is is happening here will be really amplified to another extent so you're you're sort of in that mindset and uh, i i i'm totally fine with the whole ott distribution you know uh, setup and i think films should be made for both but when it comes to ott i do think it would change the way we make a film because the audience is really not going to see it like that in that dimension and that would change the the basic you know technical nature of how we make it i i recently had a conversation with someone at a platform and we were talking about this exactly and i my question was that so you know so this has to be sort of imagined differently and they came back saying no 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 we want exactly the same thing but i don't uh, you know i think it will change because the simple blink of an eye can be so much more powerful when you know seen at that size and that that level of amplification whereas on a television screen it is a very different experience your uh, i think that the truest most intimate experience happens in that kind of atmosphere with a huge big screen in the dark in silence with that excellent sound system that is what will really make it come alive and uh, now when when we are going to be showing films in in different circumstances which don't have that level of sanctity so to speak then we should be aware about that and and i think you know uh, look at our film making from that aspect we all the time keep hearing about the dearth in good writing in indian cinema any suggestions you have how to empower the writing community and also discover and create a better writing community so uh about writing i have the same set of questions that you have uh, i'm also trying to find the answer i'm a struggling writer so if you find answers please let me also know thank you i think we've got some very very good uh, uh, uh good caliber of writers i just feel we our writers are not as exposed in terms of the technicalities of writing so to in to improve that i feel that there should be more writing uh, rooms and workshops where writers can just collaborate purely in terms of uh, sharing techniques tools ideas and writers need to be open to that uh, saying that uh, uh, there are also fantastic online courses which i think should be taken advantage of to learn different approaches it's not that people elsewhere know have a better way of writing it's just that they may have a better way of telling the same story uh, well i i'm i'm uh, still learning about all of this in these uh, processes i would think one uh, one story is there in every you know i think everyone has that that one story they really want to tell and often what is lacking is time 
and uh, it's amazing that uh, so many people have started to write with this whole lockdown because they feel it's it's the only way they can express themselves or you know there's something they've been meaning to write for the longest time and now they finally have the chance and so many reasons i think people are finding their own reasons so we should be seeing some you know very interesting material emerging by the end of all of this and uh, i think we're also at a time where there's a lot of introspection there's a lot of thinking that is that is an internal kind of thinking as well and that will definitely affect the kind of scripts that are written but i do wish i do wish um, the industry was more welcoming of writers and had more um, more things to equip them and to empower them like writing labs like you know sessions which are mentoring you know all of that would really help improve the quality of the writing and uh, make it a lot more accessible to people who are not necessarily from the industry uh, i personally feel writers um as a community uh, the skill set is the most underrated uh, community uh, in films and in and no specific industry as such be it bollywood or down south uh, they used never get their due they never um, were really uh, celebrated or or promoted or pushed uh, as other technicians or as other people from beyond the camera so uh, as as producers and filmmakers i don't think they felt empowered enough uh, because of which there was always been a dearth of good writing but with the advent of uh, online platforms um, and with the with the uh, rise in demand for content writers have suddenly uh, uh, taken on the mantle of and and you know you you suddenly see uh, so many writers come out in the forefront and and show running shows and and uh, writing for uh, uh, shows and writing for original uh, films uh, to be showcased on online platforms so uh, they have really uh, um, uh, adapted and I, i think the online platform has really empowered and pushed them in the foreground and now you see so many writers uh, aspiring writers as well as well known writers uh, taking to the uh, uh, taking up the mantle for for uh, online content and really championing um uh, really good content uh but now i feel it's their time now and uh, now you can um if you are if you have the writing chops and you have the writing talent there'll be tons of people waiting to uh, hear from you i think it is simple i mean we got to reward the writer and give him the credits i mean as of i mean as of today i mean it's hardly i mean i mean for example i'm a more writer who loves writing but i mean i end up directing i mean it's not that i hate that thing but it's just that not that not all the material which i love i would want to uh, uh want to direct for example i mean just to give you uh, when what you write uh but for what you get paid for writing i guess what you direct is just obscene it's just something so thing i mean it just demotivates someone starting to write or someone who puts in a year writing it i think the longest and the hardest process in the whole of the film making is writing it and unfortunately writing is the most unrewarded and uncredited kind of a craft that's the reason why we don't have enough people aspiring to be writers and how do we make it better i think just as simple as it to start at least let's give them credit let them pay them well and i just hope that there will be more people coming out to be professional writers than trying to be directors just because it pays them well I remember working with a writer from LA for one project I was working on and I remember learning so much purely because of a different approach and nothing else it wasn't that it's not about someone being more creative or less creative it's just the way you look at something and that opens your eyes you know to when you have that exposure I remember her telling me uh, that the story we are writing is character driven so at no point once we breathe life into our characters and we make them full rounded uh life like people uh there's no way you can get stuck in the story because let the character drive the narrative and at no point will the character get stuck it's like real life it's like i'm a character in real life uh i will never get stuck i we can walk into a room and not know what to do and maybe do nothing but that's also doing something 
but it's not that I'm a character on paper who just I don't know what the character is going to do in a scene. So let the character drive the uh, scenes, and you can never get stuck. And I had never looked at it in that way, and uh, uh, so it worked very differently. We formed our characters, we knew them inside out, and then we started moving into how they would react in the basic framework of the story. And they pretty much started driving scenes, the characters, and uh, that I never looked at writing in that way. With regard to the sort of training or or help for writers, I wanted to say one more thing that with the whole uh, COVID nineteen lockdown, there are a whole lot of universities which have really opened up their resources. For example, I I recently did a course with Sundance Lab, which was about writing, and it was such a useful course because. I haven't actually done done a, a, a learning course in a quite a while, and and uh, it was wonderful to refresh. But not only that, it uh, gives us an exposure to a very different kind of uh, writing, and also the kind of mentoring which was available was extremely helpful. And besides that, there are so many free webinars, so many things that we all have access to now. So it's a wonderful time that way uh, to to gain access to a lot of resources that can help us learn. And besides that, you have uh, you know you have like the Screenwriters Association. They have actually started doing these courses, which are just you know one day workshops on specific subjects, which are all to do with writing. And that kind of very proactive intervention is really what we need. So I hope this happens at at multiple levels, where we're sharing resources and we're really encouraging people in spirit and in action to write more and and just literally you know enter enter the industry. With our country being one of the largest manufacturers of cinema, why do you think we haven't made an indelible mark internationally? Or is it not important to create a global mark? About why we have not made a huge dent internationally, in spite of us making so many movies, is uh, I think it is because we don't intend to do that. Uh, we are very happy catering to our people. Uh, but it's a huge market outside once we realize that and once we uh, plan for it i think we'll get there we have definitely made a mark internationally um, but uh, i understand your question it, it's we have truly not made like a uh, we not made in, enough i think of an impact uh, our films don't regularly cross over and make a huge noise but um, i think off late last a decade or more uh, consistently we have our films have uh, hit international markets and festivals and done reasonably well uh, yes but uh, the, the 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 ratio is definitely on the lower side but uh, i think and, and i think it's wrong to assume that because we make a certain kind of films it never manages to cross over uh, i think lagan was a typical typical very typical mainstream bollywood film which managed to cross over and managed to uh, uh, reach the highest point of in terms of uh, going uh, it, it was a uh, nominated for the best foreign language film so it managed to really cross over and make a huge impact there there have been many examples of uh, films uh, made from our country and not just hindi but regional films also making a huge impact in film festivals and uh, uh, film markets abroad but yeah uh, the ratio is definitely on the lower side well i do believe that in india we have uh, you know cinema has a very different function from anywhere else in the world it's not easily comparable to any other sort of school of film because in our country a huge part of our population really depends on film as as entertainment and it is of course of of the in the last decade things have you know opened up there's there's uh, you know so much to watch on television and and with the connectivity improving that has also changed but when we talk about uh, the real uh, chunk of the population in in rural areas where in the rural areas we're still talking single screens we're still still talking that you know that big cinema release which people really look forward to you know, that that i think is very distinctive to india which has of course affected the kind of films we make also we have such a strong performing arts culture that our dance our drama our music all of this has has sort of really made inroads into our film and that is a very interesting synthesis i don't think we really need to shape shift to become like anybody else 
maybe there can be a section of films which which you know yearn to be you know seen on the same platform as film outside of india but all of our film does not really have to go that way we are you know a synthesis of our own culture and why should we really you know change to choose suit anybody else's palette i feel it's a massive cultural difference which uh, is one of the main reasons um i mean some of our filmmakers are incredible and have very successfully crossed over uh but the fact is on a mass level that's not happened because i think it's it is a, we have a very different uh cultural sensibility of how we consume our films we have no issue with uh, a character suddenly breaking out into song and dance uh but for a non uh familiar audience with that kind of sensibility they get completely alienated they don't know what's going on they stop investing in the character uh they can't figure out if it's a musical or not a musical uh and that tends to definitely uh be one of the reasons why a lot of our films don't translate uh and make a big impact abroad saying that i think we made a very indelible mark of being uh, our own art form i mean you go anywhere in the world and they know what uh, indian films and which they tend to call bollywood across the board but uh, it 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 has its own identity i mean and obviously its own interpretation in different parts of the world and uh, i feel that mark has been made for sure it's for me hard to understand that why and why couldn't we really go tell global stories i mean with all the kind of mythologies we have and all the kind of uh, everyday stories what we wake up to see so much rich so diverse it's for me, it's hard for me to why didn't we really push ourselves i mean why didn't we as storytellers go global i mean maybe we were secure or we, we didn't lack we didn't take the courage or we didn't we didn't we didn't want to put in that extra effort to go tell global stories but i think it is time i mean maybe back then we didn't we, we didn't uh we didn't want to go pack our bags here leave what was secure to go to hollywood to make something but at least now with the ott which has come up now you can make your dark from germany then you can make something from india if money is from spain can come out something from here could come out definitely i think i ott could be opening up to indian storytellers who could be telling global stories and it's time we tell them i mean i think with what all we are surrounded with absolutely we should be telling something uh, we should be selling something global you know i i remember working with some street children where you know one of them was making very little money in one day and um, you know he he once told me that if i had the choice that i could either eat a biryani or i could you know watch a movie then i would prefer to just watch the movie and go hungry and i i just didn't understand that why would you make that choice and and he said so simply he said jeji if i you know eat a meal i will be hungry by tomorrow morning but if i watch a movie it stays with me so much longer and i mean that really struck me and uh, you know how does one argue with that kind of logic so i think when we make films we have to be aware who we are making them for and if we have that power if we have that ability to to make people feel that way then why should we change you know we should get better and better we should think more about bringing more of our culture in having our own idiom i'm really not for just imitating somebody else i think we have many wonderful things in our culture which truly deserve to be showcased in our films as well we have our own ethos we have such diversity in our country so much of which is really not captured in cinema and that is such an important part of our jobs as as filmmakers so yes i i would really think that uh, indian cinema is in a class of its own and we really shouldn't uh, you know wait to be compared or assessed with anybody else i am so happy that uh, this discussion has taken place because these are uh, like i said these are questions which have been always everybody wants an answer for 
and uh, i hope this would serve the purpose of many young dads thank you so much for taking time and uh, listening to these answers i hope it was helpful thank you stay well stay safe should i be looking here thinking this was the camera but i think it's there or there i'm really not sure